Hello and welcome to the uh, 119th episode of the Go Gin podcast where our intrepid heroine is up against the villain of no mojo. Not really. I've got mojo. I just don't want to actually do anything. Do you have, do you get like that when you it's not like I don't want to crochet. I just don't want to do anything. I think it has something to do that we have been over 90 degrees Fahrenheit every day for over a week. We have some terrible thunderstorms at nighttime and then it's just as hot and muggy as it can be. Um, of course, I'm at work all day, so, and we have, everybody has computers, so they keep it like 65 degrees, so it's nice and, excuse me, nice and cool at work. And then I come out into the heat and it's like a physical hand pressing me down. It's so hot and miserable. I hate it. But anyway, that's me. How are you? <laughs> Today is Sunday, July 23rd. Um, I have no finished objects to show you. I do want to show you a look into my bullet journal this week where I did a little storytelling um, in the bullet journal. Um, but first, why don't we take care of the lack of mojo, okay? I have two projects that I worked on this week, and I did work on something every day this week. Um, couple hours probably most days while I would watch uh, I got into watching the Netflix no the Amazon series um, Bosch I think I have mentioned it before it's one of my favorites it's based on a series of books by Michael Connolly I've read several of them uh, long ago, but I really enjoy his style of writing. It's rough, tough, detective, kind of, you know, Sherlock's Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, in that he can see the patterns that help him solve the crimes. Anyway, this is my Metro kerchief. This week I did make it out to where I am now decreasing. You really can't see it because I can't get it in frame very well. Because of course the widest point is the center and now I am going to be decreasing back down. Uh, since last week, right there's my progress keeper. So I've gotten, you know, about three repeats done of the pattern. And because the rows are so long now, it's taking very long for me to get the uh, repeats done because it's a lot of stitches. I think it's something like 89 stitches on the widest rows and that's a lot and to have to fiddle with getting everything in the back loop only and that kind of thing it um, it takes a lot of time. I'm still enjoying it. I still think it's beautiful I still think it is the finished project is going to be beautiful. I just have to uh, work on it. And I think I worked on this two or three days this week. Um, it was my take to work project. Excuse me. So I, I'm still loving it. It's just a matter of now. It's going to go faster now because it's going to be shrinking back down to the end. This is my metro, no, this is not my metro kerchief. That was my metro kerchief. This is my 10 stitch Tunisian. That's where I am now on that yellow. You will see that I have not woven in ends in a while. Let's see. Here's where I was the last time I saw you, which was last Sunday. I haven't been anywhere since then, <laughs> except to work. So anyway, I went, I 
looked and looked and found some of my um, little mini skeins that I'd bought long ago and some are five grams. See this little blue patch? That's a five gram mini skein. And that's as long as it is. And so here's another one. Isn't that pretty? And I love the way the Tunisian stitch, you get two colors on each row on these um, color changing yarns just by nature of the Tunisian stitch. Isn't that neat? Isn't that pretty? I mean, I think it's pretty. I don't know if y'all do or not, but I do. This purple variegate. This blue. These were all the little mini, mini skeins. Now, this pink was a 10 gram mini. So it's twice as big. I did that in my head without a calculator or anything. And then this green, that was a ball that I got in a swap. Or, I don't know that. That, that was not a measured mini. This is just a little five gram. And then I'm working on this ball, which is a, all used up. It's just air now. But um, I'm working. And as I said, the other, the other square that I did previously, I made seven rounds. So this is one round of this pink counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to need two times around for me to finish off this square and then start on another one. I love this. I don't have to think. I don't have to count my stitches. It gets fiddly in the corners. Can you see here on the back side? Because you have to decrease and then you have to increase back up. Looks really pretty on the outside. Mitered corners. So you have to do that and it gets a little fiddly, but not enough to um, not enough to interrupt my TV viewing. <laughs> so anyway, I really see me spending the rest of this, well, this coming week, which is coming up. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> this coming week, which is going to have seven days. I don't know. Um, we're going camping next weekend. But um, I see myself working on the 10 stitch and the Metro kerchief all week. Nothing else. I'm not, don't think I'm going to make any more blanket squares this week. I have the worst time keeping up with my Metro kerchief instructions because I've got it in one of my Star Knits bags. But silly me, rolled it up longwise. So I have to roll it up longwise now or else it just creates a horrible mess. But it does stick out. And I have just left them many, many times. Just terrible. So that's the extent of my craftiness, which I did work on something every day. Last week, I think, while I was waiting for the podcast to upload, I did some watercolor. Isn't that pretty? Um, I did it on a separate sheet of paper that I just had run through the copy machine at work and um, printed off like a coloring book design. Because this page, when I did all this doodling that says camping, it had it had bled through the page because it's right much concentrated color. So I decided I was going to paint something or whatever on another piece of paper and then glue it in, tape it in, whatever. Um, and so that's what I did. So while I was uploading last weekend, I just had myself a fun time painting. My sister gave me, for Christmas last year, a um, coloring book. 
and it is an adult coloring book. And when I say that, I mean adult. I can't show you what I painted because I want to keep this PG or, or R. We're not going to go to the X. <laughs> My sister has a wicked sense of humor. She does. That's why one of the reasons I love her so. This is my, this was last week's bullet journal list. This is some more journaling that I did. And over here, I was feeling very glum on hump day this week. Wednesday is hump day. Uh, that's just one of the things they say. And it's just so hard for me to get the energy and the oomph, whatever, to do Wednesday things. Because it's it's like the weekend is never coming. I've been at this for years this week, it seems. Every day has had 59 hours. And so I really liked what this little drawing says because it's so hard for me to get to the top of hump day because it's all crap I don't want to do. But then, whee, once I'm down the slope of hump day, I'm on to things I want to do. So if you're at a point in your life where you get to do what you want to do most days, please be thankful for that. Please, please. Because there's people like me, there's people like me, sorry I had a flashy thing come up, and I don't own my days. They don't belong to me. They belong to the people I work for, and that makes me miserable. So if you don't have to do that, please be thankful for it. I did an illustrated letter. I don't know why. It just jumped in my head. Let's do an illustrated letter. And so I did a capital J. And that made me really happy. I drew that. I mean, you know, it's just little swirls. <laughs> Nothing to, it's no faces or anything in it. But it really made me happy. And that's, so that's what I did at break one day. And then this is what I did at lunch one day. Was I, I drew a story about... How miserable <laughs> I was. I posted this on Instagram, so if you saw it, um, if you are following my Instagram, you've seen this already. I hope you have. Um, I hope you are following me on Instagram. I'm Gojen, G-O-J-E-N-N. Follow me, and I will follow you back as long as you're public. If you're private, I don't follow private stuff because that doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, this says help. I've fallen and I can't get up. And I fell down. And this is my bullet journal list for this coming week. I fell down. That's why I wrote it in my journal. Y'all are seeing <laughs> how my twisted little brain works. But yes, I fell down. I got up to go to the bathroom one night. And I was still very disoriented and in my dream. I remember I remember the dream vividly. I was with a bunch of people. We were waiting for our table at a restaurant. And we were waiting and waiting. It was that kind of dream. And people were coming in and being seated ahead of us. And I, I don't know. It didn't make sense because I was looking out the window and I could see a road far away and I said well I'm looking for my parents but I don't see them but we can go ahead and be seated we don't have to wait for them we can go ahead what so but in my dream we were waiting to be seated and apparently in my dream I excused myself to the restroom because I woke myself up having to go so I don't know I don't know what I did. I didn't turn on the light, which I do sometimes and I don't sometimes, so it doesn't make sense. I'll I need to from now on. But um I took a few steps and I hit something on the side of my foot and started going over and I thought I was right beside my bed. 
the foot of the bed. So I thought, no problem, I'll just hit the bed. Oh, I'm soft. Ha <laughs> ha, no, no harm, no foul. Uh, but no, I had passed the bed and I hit the floor. And I hit it with a bang and apparently I screamed somewhere in there because I woke my husband up, you know, and it's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And by that time I had already gotten back up and was making my way to the bathroom because I still had to go. But I tell you, it hurt. It hurt my pride because uh, I don't want to be feeble. I'm still working. I got plenty of time left that I don't want to be feeble. So, um, what I did, I don't know. I think, because I, after I went to the bathroom, I just came back and just went right back to sleep. I probably picked up my dream at the same point. I didn't, it was not my intention to wake up. I don't like to wake up fully. And that's a problem, apparently. Unless I have handrails, you know, and a little guard path taking me to the bathroom at night. I can't show it to you, and I'm not going to because nobody shaved my legs. So, But I've got a big purple knot right below my knee because that's where I landed, apparently. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't think about it because I went right back to sleep. So I, the details are lost to me. Makes no sense, but I did. I scared myself. Um, didn't really hurt myself. Just gave myself a bruise, but still. Am I, am I to the point of, you know, she can't be left alone now? Yeah, right. Let's see. I'm going to do a little uh, video insert of the, some things I got from the Wish app. It's all stuff from China. I know my daddy hates that because he says you should buy American. I mean, so many companies are out of business now because we don't buy American. Um, he's right. Um, but at any rate, where was I going with that? Wish app, stuff from China. A lot of stuff's free. You pay a dollar or two shipping. I got a pair of leggings and a top, a little pair of travel scissors, a dozen pair of knitting needles, um, and each pack comes with the knitting needles, a gauge finder, you know, what size needles they are, and a darning needle. So for like, I think that was three dollars, plus then another dollar shipping, whatever. I got a pack of a, like a hundred stitch markers. I got a um, pack of cool pens because the nerd in me would not be satisfied without a pack of pens. They were free. I think I paid $2 shipping. So they were $2 with free shipping, whichever way we want to look at it, folks. Um, anyway, I'm going to put a little separate video of that in. Um, I gave my dogs haircuts today. I watched a video on YouTube. <laughs> Isn't that what everybody says? And then, you know, bad things happen. But I, I just, uh, I got a pair of hairdresser scissors from the Wish app and I paid $2 for them. And they're really heavy and nice. They've got a good feel, they're very sharp. Um, so I didn't, cut my doggy's hair with the with a razor because that noise just they don't like the hair dryer they don't like anything with the noise um, but I just snip snip snipped and, and got off some of their extra hair and um, I think they were mad at me just a little bit but I think they'll be okay I got because my Bella she's so little anyway that when her eyebrows grow out they just cover her her eyes instantly so I trimmed those up so we can see her pretty eyes neither one of them will come to me when I look at them anymore because I betrayed them <laughs> what have I been reading and listening to oh so happy I think last week I told you that I had been uh, trying to slog my way through the AJ uh, the storied life of AJ Fickery 
I, I just decided I couldn't do it. And so I knew I was going to quit reading the book. So I wanted to see if my guesses as to how it would turn out were correct. So I jumped to the next to last chapter and yes, exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. I may have missed some joys, some sadness along the way, but it still ended exactly the way I knew it would. So why would I want to waste my time reading it? I, I'm just not, I don't know, I must not be mainstream fiction reader anymore. I used to like a good, a good mainstream, you know, a beach book, or something like that. But they're all so, they just are the same. I don't like that. I don't enjoy that. So what, have, what am I doing since I gave up on uh, A.J. Fickery? Happily. I, let's see, that was on Audible. Yes, that's on Audible. So I had already gotten a book and the name of it is Little Heaven, and it's by Nick Cutter. If you remember a while back, I read a book by Nick Cutter, and it was The Troop, about a, a bunch of Boy Scouts who go to a little island to have, like, you know, camp days, okay? Unbeknownst to anybody, <laughs> naturally, a fellow washes up on shore with a zombie vampire type virus. And there's nobody on the island but this very sick person and this troop of Boy Scouts and their leader. So, really scary. Not scary in... Oh, it was very good. Very much like Stephen King. So, um, this book that I've got now is called Little Heaven by Nick Cutter, and it's about a religious retreat where the leader from San Francisco felt called to take his flock out into the wilderness so they could be closer to God. That's the premise. However, the, the three main characters that you meet in the beginning of the book are all um, mercenaries, assassins, uh, hired guns, whatever, bounty hunters that have no, no quarrel with, you know, bringing you back the whatever's left. <laughs> so anyway, their path is crossing with this little heaven up in the up in the wilds in the mountains and, and you know what something else is there it's not someone it's a Stephen King kind of thing it's very it is very scary because there's children and these innocent most of the people in in the pastor's flock are very innocent, you know, they're just there because the pastor told them to and um, <laughs> Scary really scary I think and I'm having a ball with it. I'm not having to slog at all I have to set a timer whenever I'm listening to it To say okay when you're done with this you have to do something else you know, you can read for 45 minutes or you can listen for 45 minutes. And of course, when I listen, I'm doing uh, crochet probably or crossword puzzles, one or the other. But still, I'm really enjoying it. And also, on Kindle, I don't remember, what did I have last on Kindle? The book that I read last Saturday or the Saturday before at camp? I don't remember. Anyway, I've got Molly Fide, F-Y-D-E, The Parsona Rescue. The author is Howard, Hugh, no, Hugh Howey, H-O-W-E-Y. He wrote the uh, 
wool and the dust books about the people living in silos in the future and thinking the world outside is unlivable and is it or so anyway but that's those stories this story is a very Star Trek with a girl main character and intrigue around every corner and a little bit of mush but not too much I don't want mush I don't like mush I'm like the little kid um, in the Princess Bride that the grandpa's reading the story to who says, oh, it doesn't have kissing, does it? Anyway, Molly Fied has been very interesting, and it has enough um, Star Trek-y kind of jargon, you know, like thrusters and uh, force field and blah, that it makes me go, oh, <laughs> That must be real, because I don't know what that is. And so I'm really enjoying it. I finished the first book. Uh, it's called The Burn, B-E-R-N, Saga. So I finished the first one, which was Molly Fied and the uh, Parsona Rescue. The second one I've started, but I don't remember what it is. My bad. I'm sorry. It's the second in The Burn B-E-R-N. Um, I think that's all I have. Plus my little snippet of the uh, Wish stuff. Um, yesterday was our adoptiversary. We've had our dogs uh, five years yesterday that they were, they rescued us. That's what I choose to say because um, after I lost my daughter, my heart was, I kind of imagined it like Doctor, uh, or like the Grinch, the Grinch's heart, you know, how it was all shriveled up, and that's the way I kind of was. And my dogs, they have really helped me feel joy, and, and uh, to feel content with my life because they're there and they, they'll they get over being mad at me for haircuts. Surely, they, don't you think they will? I hope so. <laughs> at any rate, thanks for spending some time with me today. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me today. I don't know what happened. The camera just stopped. So I don't know if it's like, okay, we can't take any more of you now, so shut up. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Uh, until I see you next week, which like I said, we're going camping, so I hope to have time to talk to you next Sunday after we get home. Um, it's supposed to be a little cooler, only in the 80s instead of the 90s, and uh, possible rain showers, but they say that every day, so it's the same. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Until I see you next time, I wish you nothing but love and laughter okay I wanted to do just a quick little video of my haul that I got from the wish app w-i-s-h if you haven't seen it it is a um, little app that you get on your phone and you get stuff from China basically um, and you don't pay very much for it this right here is a pair of uh, stirrup pants and they'll be going to my daughter because they are no way near big enough to go on me. This is, this was free. I had to pay a dollar shipping and it's a hundred of those locking stitch markers. Who can pass up, you know, a dollar? These pens are beautiful and they write beautifully and they don't ghost or bleed through the pages in my bullet journal so I love them and I love pretty colors y'all know that this is washi tape and it's the Van Gogh field it's not starry nights it's the it's the field with the birds in the sky don't know if it has a name 
This is a pair, I haven't taken them out of the package, but this is a pair of travel scissors. I'm trying to see if I can do it. I can't do it one-handed, but it has a little cover over the pointy end. I'm always looking for something that I can slip in my bag. Um, this is a set of a dozen pair sets, whatever, a dozen things of knitting needles. Each packet has a set of knitting needles, a gauge minder, and a, you can't see it in this one because it's fallen out of its spot. And a, sorry about that, and a darning needle uh, for weaving in ends. The, the sizes, I'm not sure because they've got like this is a 15. I don't really know what that is going to equate to, but I've got my own needle gauges, so I'll just figure that out. And there's the little steel ones, and that's what I like best um, because I find them to be suitably slippery. Uh, bamboo is not slippery en enough. Wood is not slippery enough for me, but anyway, these were like two dollars and then I had to pay a dollar shipping or something like that I've been looking for a tripod I don't think this is one of the super great ones it's not what I was I think I paid three dollars for this and then like a dollar shipping so and this is supposed to be one of the bendy ones that I can hopefully used to film and bring you wonderful adventures. Um, in addition to what I have here, I got a black shirt to go with the black leggings, but these are stirrup pants leggings, same difference to me. Um, it's a little too sheer for me, but I could still wear it like over a swimsuit, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and yes, it's kind of junky junk, but I did not pay, I don't think I paid more than $3 for anything. So that's one reason I figured it wouldn't be a total loss. The pants, I figured I could give them to my daughter. If I can't wear them or I could give them to someone at work, I, you know, it's not... A big big deal but I'm looking forward to seeing if I can make the tripod do what I want it to do all right that was my wish haul oh everything comes separately packaged you may get two or three things on the same day but they're in separate packages like they came from different places so anyway this makes me happy this makes me happy <laughs>